Hey everyone, welcome back. If you haven't seen the previous videos in this playlist, I'm going to put the link to the playlist in the description below. If you have seen it, you know that what we have configured so far is two areas, area 10 and area 20, where all routers within the area are level one routers. Okay, so this is a, this consists of a level one, and then these four consist of a level one. In between, we have a level two link set up so that we could do some inter area routing. Now, we haven't done anything, you know, I haven't done anything in between videos. So, what we should see, as we saw, is if we log into router three down here, we should see a default route pointing up to R1. Uh, because, like I said before, the, the level one areas kind of act as like a, a totally not so stubby. And then we'll see, you know, the, the level one. So the loop back here and the loop back here. So let's go ahead and take a look at router three's routing table. And we're on router three. So show IP route ISIS. And sure enough, we see the default route up to one, the loop back of one and the loop back of four. So even though we can reach everywhere and I can prove that by doing a ping to 777, sorry, seven, and I'll source it from my loop back. The pings work, but we lose kind of some of the visibility and there are certain situations where we might need to know router seven's loop back, or we might be doing some traffic engineering, you know, whatever the case may be. But the point being is that what we're gonna do in this video is that we are gonna take router three here and we are going to get it to learn the 7.7.7.7, .7 sorry, slash 32 network. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is kind of, well, first we need to discuss design, then we need to discuss where to implement this change. So the first thing is design. There are a couple different ways we could do this. If we wanted to learn every single link and loop back, from outside the area. You know, if we wanted to learn all this stuff, the easiest way to do it would just be to take this level two and just extend it here, you know, to everywhere. Put everything in level two, have level two come across here, put level two here, here, here. I'm sorry, this should be a two, whatever. Now router three will just know everything because we will have that information in level two. Again, if you don't understand the difference between the levels and areas, I would go back and watch my last video where it is explained. So if we want to learn everything, just throw it in level two. It makes sense. It's an easier configuration, to be honest. If we don't want to know everything, which is what we're going to assume in this, we just want to know the loopbacks on R3 and R4. They just want to know router seven's loopback. What we could do is what's called route leaking. What we or where we have to do it is going to depend on what the current routing table looks like and your knowledge of ISIS. So let's head down to R1 because R1 is a great place to start here because we have this level one that's sending routes into the level two domain. And then we need to see which routes are in the level two domain and then which routes need to be sent into the level one domain. So if we go to R1 and let me get this up. Let's do a show IP route ISIS. And I'm just going to begin at gateway because it makes things easier. We see router three, four, five, six, and seven. So this route is reaching router one which makes sense because the level one routes do not get summarized when they go to level two. Okay, we lose the link state information, but they don't get summarized into a default, like if we're going from level two into level one. So the level one routes are going into level two, which is reaching router one, and then router one is not sending that information down to its area. It's just, you know, we just have a default. So, on router one is where we know we need to make the configuration change. So how do we do it? Well, you're gonna find this is very, very simple. It's going to require 
an access list and a loopback or a distribute list, but I prefer route maps. So let me configure the access list and route map, and then we can take a look at the actual command. So the access list I'm going to use is just, it would help if I was in configuration mode, is access list, I'll say seven, permit host seven, 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 seven. I'm just doing the host route to seven. Let's do a route map. We'll call it R7, permit 10, match IP address, and then the access list seven. So, so far, pretty easy. Now we just go to router ISIS lab. And in this situation, we're actually gonna use the redistribute command, which seems like it's kind of weird, but if you look at the whole command, it makes sense. So we're gonna redistribute ISIS, and you need to put IP here. Okay, so let me put a question mark. You could either put the routing area tag, so this would be like a different process, or IP, to do redistribution of IP routes between levels or processes. So we are gonna do IP, and then we're gonna take the route from level two. Okay, so we're gonna put level two here, but again, I'll just question mark it for you so you can see. Inter area routes from level two. So from level two into level one. And now we can do a distribute list or a route map. I already have our route map set up, so it's just route map R7, and then there's nothing else. So the, the command here, once you see the full thing, it makes total sense. You know, there's no leak command. It's redistribute level two into level one, anything that matches this route map. So we can end. If we head down to router three now, show IP route ISIS, and look what we have. We have our seven route. It's an IA, which means ISIS inter area. And it's to R1. Now, if we looked in the LSA, I'm sorry, the LSP, which is show ISIS database, it should be this LSP right here. So I'll do show ISIS database um, R1.0000 detail. We see IP inter area, our seven route with a slash 32. And we have the metric of 40. So it didn't lose any of its metric information. Okay, if I went to router one, and I did a show IP route 7777. We could take a look at the metric here, which is 40. And router one is just sending that same metric down to R3, All right? And in our routing table, show IP route 7777, the route metric is 50. So we added 10 to the metric that we're learning from R1. So the leaking is a very simple concept. Um, the configuration really is not that hard either. You just do the redistribute command. It's just kind of weird because it's you know from level two into level one, okay? Other than that, there's really not much more I think you can figure, especially at this level, but just understanding route leaking, how it works, where to implement it is gonna be you know, the most important parts of this. On the next video, we'll go up doing some route manipulation from level one into level two. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video.